So good morning, everyone, and, and, and welcome. Um, my name is Ben Newton, and I lead Oncology Solutions for GE Healthcare. This morning, I'm going to be talking to Cheryl Bishop, um, our partner uh, at Roche Diagnostics. Um, and we're going to be talking about transforming cancer care using virtual tumor boards. Cheryl, uh, please, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, Ben. Thanks very much. I'm Cheryl Bishop, Head of Alliance Management for Roche Diagnostics Information Solutions. Uh, really pleased to be working with GE in this area. Thanks, Cheryl. So by way of introduction, GE and Roche uh, have a shared uh, and common vision around the evolution of, of personalized healthcare, um, with, of course, a focus on improving efficiency of care and, of course, improving outcomes uh, for patients. We are two companies um, with global expertise, global deep expertise in the distinct areas of um, in vitro and tissue diagnostics, and of course, in vivo or imaging diagnostics. And what we wanna do is combine these complementary disciplinary uh, disciplines under this shared vision and try to accelerate the delivery of patient-centric care through truly integrated uh, diagnostics. And as we all know, integration of information and data is what will transform um, the personalization of, of, of therapeutic decision making and the personalization of care to improve outcomes. So we, we want to make that um, care more precise um, for every clinician, make it easier for every clinician, and also more personalized for patients. And together we're moving towards um, delivery of this vision through what we've called the Navify Tumor Board as our first um, step into this integrated and efficient and, and hopefully highly personalized space. So Sean, maybe you could tell me a little bit about how you see this um, uh, developing and, and how you see the platform actually doing this job. Absolutely, Ben, thanks. Yeah, you mentioned our first foray together as, as Navify Tumor Board. I mean, this is a piece of an ambition to really create uh, digital clinical decision support solutions that integrate these disparate sources of data. You mentioned in vivo and in vitro data, the relevant patient, patient data in a comprehensive way that's going to allow clinicians to make the best decisions for their patients. Uh, that is really the goal of this, this first foray with, with uh, Navify Tumor Board. Um, and, and the key is really to focus on the patient holistically. You know, it's not just genetics, it's not just the image, it's actually the patient context, the history, and all of that in vivo and vitro data taken together. Thanks so much for, for, for that, Cheryl. I, I guess, um, you know, the virtualization of care is, is, is not a new trend. Um, but the need for virtual working, um, frankly, in all aspects of our life has, has been thrown into, into sharp focus with the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. Um, but that has led to an unprecedented um, drive, I think, for the adoption of, of virtual tools, digital tools in healthcare too, to support um, social distancing and, and try to maintain uh, you know, the momentum in, in decision-making around individuals' patients' care um, do, do you see the same uh, driver as, as well, Cheryl? Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly been a unique situation um, and transformative, I believe, in the long run for, for digital health. So we've seen a couple of uh, examples of how things are changing from a, you know, even a commercial perspective, right? CMS loosening uh, regulations around what they'll reimburse for as regards telehealth, um, unprecedented investment into digital technologies. Uh, the highest quarter, I think, for, for VC investment has now occurred during, during this time. You know, but importantly, um, you know, there's those structural things which are, which are really critical, but, I'm, but I've been so struck by the impact on, on cancer patients, actually. So there, there are quite a few studies uh, now that, you know, suggesting that they're really poorly impacted by this situation. A uh, study in the U.S. suggests that there's going to be in excess of 10,000 uh, deaths uh, in breast and colorectal cancer because of this, you know, people who otherwise would have had different outcomes. And also in the U.K., there's a study uh, for, you know, specifically those newly diagnosed patients, for those people who um, have a diagnosis and should be getting chemotherapy but, but aren't due to the situation or even those uh, that aren't getting a diagnosis. And they're suggesting that over 6,000 people may um, 
suffer an untimely death because of these, these excess deaths, because of these uh, lack of, of care continuity. Um, and specifically, you know, the clinicians need to be able to make these decisions in order to provide that care. Um, and, and that is, for me, really where, you know, we're trying to make an impact. No, I, I agree. And look, I'm, I'm from the UK. I've, I've seen those reports. And, and I think that's reflected in other reports, actually, across um, Europe. The um, the suspension of elective procedures in many cases, the reduction in the screening capacity, diagnostic capacity, and of course even um, suspension of, of, of treatments, uh, uh, surgery as well as radiation therapy has, has led to those, those, those huge challenges. I, I, I read also that uh, ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology, have issued specific guidelines to try to maintain the momentum, of course, the momentum in, in decision-making around individual patient care is utterly critical in terms of, um, of, of getting a positive uh, outcome. So I think those challenges we see um, across both regions, um, US as, as, as well as Europe, I think also we've seen significant impact on, um, on how patients may be monitored remotely and, and maybe that'll in due course um, lead to uh, not only the adoption of, of, of virtual um, systems um, in, in diagnosing, but also supporting systems such as telemedicine practice to, to support um, patients you know, in the community. Those challenges um, are, are going to continue, but the solutions hopefully, I think, are there to, to support the, the continuity of care. The other thing that we, we've seen particularly in, in, um, in, in Europe um, is, is that those face-to-face -face meetings, although they've been difficult because of social distancing, um, actually the virtual methodologies, virtual MDTs can be as effective in exchanging information, of course, um, reaching a decision. Um, but the tool that we've developed together, I think with um, Navify Tumor Board, which allows the access of, to data virtually rather than having to print it out, rather than to have to, to, to use it, securing the primary data source, pulling it from the, the digital data sources into the system so it can be viewed at the same time and could improve um, our practice going forward and, and maybe reduce the time needed to access that information, reduce um, the, the time needed that some of the key personas on the tumor board need to spend, hopefully making the process more efficient. So we're starting to see those benefits for navigators um, in particular, but also um, for radiologists and other specialties uh, on the tumor board so that um, they don't spend so much time because tumor boards, particularly in Europe and the UK especially, is, is taking up a huge amount of time. I guess in terms of the specifics and how um, the Navify tumor board operates, it'd be good to get your thoughts um, and maybe just uh, some details as to how how, how it works, Cheryl, um, you know, in terms of working through the cloud, for example. Sure, Ben, yeah. And uh, what we can say now is that, uh, you know, teams who have, have used it do find the, the virtual method as effective as, as, as in person. So that is great news uh, for patients. Um, and as you rightly point out, using the tool itself reduces preparation time and delayed decisions. So if they don't have all the information that they need, they may not even be able to take a decision for that, for that patient at that meeting. Um, but how we're specifically enabling the virtual uh, use case there, right? It's a cloud-based system, so it doesn't require any hardware. Um, all it requires is an internet connection to, to make it work. Um, it's very secure. Completely secure. All patient data is hosted in a secure cloud interface with encrypted in transmission and at rest. So, you know, this is a huge concern, right? Patient privacy comes up again and again. So it's a secure cloud environment. And then finally, it's a change going virtual, right? And, and we're human beings and, and all changes are not so uh, easy. So what we're doing is really supporting our customers with, with consultation and support to, to make it work for them. Uh, with the infrastructure that that they have, um, and the good news is is that we're we're finding uh, that people are finding it as effective in terms of decision making. Well, that's great to hear, and actually, a great example. And unfortunately, still in this context of the pandemic, was in Sant'Andrea. Our colleague, um, Professor Andrea Laghi, 
and his team showed that its successful use in the context of running a, uh, a gastrointestinal tumor board uh, and maintaining the, um, the decision-making and maintaining the momentum around patient care. Um, uh, and that was published, I think, in, in the Journal of, of Surgical Oncology. But what was, what was interesting is how the system was used to take that information that is essential to the decision-making, but then linked it to Google Hangouts in much the same way as we're talking now, linked it to those um, virtual methodologies for, for interaction. So to make um, the whole process virtual and of course, socially distant, but of course the momentum uh, maintained on patients. And there were some other benefits too. I don't know, can you go into some of the benefits around the data gathering as well that you, that you saw? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is a, a study we're really proud of. Um, and uh, they, they published an article. In that article, they mention uh, s specific benefits around uh, continuous and cohesive data gathering process, that they had all the patient data in one dashboard versus separate files from each specialty and, and, a, and kind of a disparate process. Um, the patient record and treatment history was documented in a detailed timeline and that, that MDT presentation, the, the presentation itself could be generated with one click, very, very easy uh, for the participants. So as a result, a shared therapeutic decision for all patients was, was really possible in that environment. So as I said, really proud of that. No, I, I, I am too, and it, it's, it's terrific to know that um, it, it made a difference in, 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 for those patients. I think, um, you know, I guess to, to sum up as we, as we draw to a close here, um, you know, the continuity of cancer care has always been a priority. Um, you know, the fact that diagnosis can't wait, it should be expedited as quickly as possible, and treatment planning um, needs to be swift and timely so that outcomes can be approved. It's always been a priority. It's been brought into sharp focus in the current um, global pandemic we're in. Um, virtual tools in this context uh, are one component of, of this process to, to, to optimize outcomes. I think they're an important one, clearly, and there's some great examples if you described on how important they, they can be, uh, in particular on, on supporting the precision treatment, because that's where the outcomes are really um, in, invoked. I see us working together um, um, more intensely because of this. Um, and I guess, Cheryl, from, from your perspective, there's, there's lots more to do too in, uh, besides um, with respect to the functionality and so on, right? Indeed, absolutely. So uh, Navify Tumor Board is really just the beginning, I would say, of, of what we'd like to develop into a suite of, of digital clinical decision support solutions. So there's some things already launched in the U.S. around guidelines. Uh, part of it, we have publication surge and clinical trial match to make sure patients are getting into trials that might be appropriate for them. But there's a lot more to come. Cancer is really complicated. Uh, and those care teams are dealing with a, a lot of, of information uh, that is being generated very, very quickly. And what we want to do is support those decision makers uh, with the latest information so that they can then make the best decisions really for their patients. Well, thank you very much, Charlotte. And listen, thank you very much for, for, for getting together um, on, on this uh, meeting. And look, if anyone who's interested in, in Navify Tumor Board, the work that we're doing together, feels they're interested to, to contribute to its development, or indeed, of course, um, interested in using it, please get in touch with us um, and we'll look forward to speaking soon. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure, Ben, thank you.